Hi guys, it's Nadia Andreva from spinachandyoga.com and today I'm with Lisa Munger. She's an Ayurvedic practitioner and we're going to talk about Ayurveda digestion and how we can use essential oils and certain Ayurvedic tips to keep our digestion healthy and how that affects our health in general. So before we get to all the questions, uh, why don't you, Lisa, talk a little bit about yourself, how you got to Ayurveda, and what have you experienced in your body once you started applying all the Ayurveda knowledge? That sounds great. Well, first, hello, Nadia, and hello to all of your um, followers. Thank you for having me today. Um, so I came to Ayurveda about... 13 years ago it's been and originally it was just uh, learning I'm a yoga teacher as well and so learning that Ayurveda was considered to be a sister science of yoga I thought before I even knew what it was I thought well I should probably know about that if I'm a yoga teacher mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, learning in the beginning how to implement Ayurveda for my own self um, I live in the Midwest and I grew up um, eating a lot of uh, foods that were that were always you know in cans or in some sort of processed kind of form um, or in you know not really right fresh so mm -hmm. even it's available to us here and so I never really knew what what whole foods was or what what um, what constituted a whole food versus anything else and I also didn't really know what was in season mm -hmm. uh, so in the beginning, I just learned season by season to figure out, okay, what's in season and observed for my own self how I felt better in my, you know, certainly my digestion, but uh, then as, as with, with good digestion, as that permeates through to everything else and allows, um, it, it allows you to just feel more vital truly more vital, more ogis, more life sap is what ogis means. Mm -hmm. So um, over the years, I have been able to incorporate Ayurveda in my yoga teaching as well as just Ayurveda on its own with, uh, with clients and seen um, truly c continue to come back to it because I see over and over again how the application of this beautiful ancient wisdom offers so much for we Westerners that is not, um, that we, that I think once we learn it, it can be quite common sense, but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily occur to us and, or we've lost our connection with some of that, with some of that, um, wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I definitely agree with you that once you start eating with seasons and using some Ayurveda techniques that you do feel so much more vital force. And a part of it is probably because our digestion becomes a lot less overburdened. So you have a lot more energy to spend doing other things, not just digesting food. And that brings us um, to digestion and Ayurveda in general. Basically, digestion is considered a cornerstone of health in Ayurveda. What is your interpretation of that statement and why do you think digestion is so important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question and it really hits at the absolute absolute heart of Ayurveda. Um, Ayurveda um, posits that everything, every sort of dis-ease, disease, but breaking those two apart into mm -hmm. dis-ease, um, whether that is in our minds or the physical manifestation of how we typically think of, of a physical disease yeah. begins with digestion. And that is digestion like we most commonly think of it that happens in a physical place in the gut. And, but it's also digestion in our minds as well as we take in and are able to, you know, to varying degrees, digest what we absorb through our senses. Mm -hmm or not digest. So um, to say that everything that, that balance truly and that um, any disease begins in digestion, it makes it, uh, makes digestion and, and seeking optimal digestion in several different ways a, a primary tenet and a good, you know, an, a, one of the first places that you start with mm -hmm. Ayurveda. Um, 
if digestion is not optimal, what 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 happens in the is that we create something called AMA, A M A, and AMA essentially is toxicity, and it's stagnation. It could be toxicity that actually is manifesting in in our digestion where we may have um, digestion that is too fast or not fast enough. Mm-hmm. Um, Ayurveda delves into some of these lovely topics. Um, or in our minds, if we're not digesti- digesting, perhaps, you know, maybe you watched um, a violent TV show or something but right before you went to bed and maybe you have a bad dream. I know that that happens to me if I do Mm -hmm. that or, you know, have a lot of stimulation right before going to bed. It's the mind that is still trying to kind of grasp with, with, or, and digest what we've absorbed through our senses during the day. So we try to strike balance in digestion so that we don't create that toxicity, that ama that then leads to, you know, maladies that range from anxiety to, you know, constipation to um, actual our manifestation of disease, like we think of it, like mm-hmm. full on um, illness, and you know, actually, even even um, more serious than that. You know, our our major yeah. diseases that are out there. Yeah, the concept of mental and emotional digestion is not very widely discussed, mm-hmm. unfortunately. No. Um, yeah. But. Um, I think a lot of people are having trouble with their physical digestion without even talking about emotional and mental. So in your 13 years of practicing Ayurveda, uh, what did you find were the most effective techniques that anyone can use to improve their physical digestion? So their stomach is not bloated, so they don't feel constipated. Um, Like what, what would be best? What do you do? Like today. Yes, exactly. Today. And that's that's what I love about Ayurveda is that you can, there are always things that you don't have to understand the whole thing, the whole shebang all at once. You just take these pieces, you you grab on to what works for you today, and then Mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow you grab on to something else. But for today, take a look at the food that you're eating. And is that food, um, you know, I, I usually talk about how, uh, we can. It's not absolute to me in, in my practice in Ayurveda that uh, certainly we want to choose fresh, seasonal, seasonal, um, seasonally available, locally available uh, produce, and uh, and the reason being is that it has the most prana. It has the mm-hmm. most vital life force. So that when we take that food into our body, yes. our body knows what to do with it. And so uh, the more that we mess with our food, the more that we um, put it into a box or, you know, freeze it with a bunch of other stuff and then maybe, you know, cook it in a microwave and just kind of it, uh, what happens in our bodies is that we we take it in and our body is not equipped to digest it properly. And you may notice if you, um, if you eat too much or if you eat things that have, lots of uh, ingredients like a lasagna that has some dairy, that has some grain, that has some vegetables. Our stomach digests each of those types of things a little differently and at different mm-hmm. rates. So we may get, your digestion will tell you, you know, where if, if it feels like you've eaten something and you're in kind of what I call a boa constrictor coma, like you have a little <laughs> yeah, little thing that you're trying to digest. And it's, it's, and it's taking all of your energy, your body Exactly. You. All you can do is just go to sleep. <laughs> All you can do, you have to go into a little coma, and um, and then, so today, you know, just what look at the foods that you're eating and see that they are uh, really the keep it simple kind of mantra that they are whole, mm-hmm. meaning that they haven't been messed with. So fresh is going to be a better choice than frozen. Frozen is going to be a better choice than canned. And I know that you know we all have different obstacles. That, and challenges that, you know, whether it's a budget or um, what's available for us seasonally. So sometimes it's not absolute. You just make the best choice you can. Mm-hmm. And then to try to take in some grains that are also whole and that haven't been, that haven't been processed yeah. again and refined and to see how your body responds. Um, one of the other things that I would mention about, um, 
about improving our digestion just as a whole because this is so common in our culture Mm -hmm. to see what kind of stimuli are you putting in front of yourself when you're eating so are you actually sitting at the table and having dinner and you know just having conversation with your family or just sitting there yourself and taking the food in it can that kind of a radical concept in our in our modern day exactly and no tv no computer no phone no t- no stim- no stimulant so no t yeah no tv no phone no uh newspaper just literally literally nothing and um so that you can well the ayurveda teaches that digestion some traditionally we're eating with our hands. So in my teacher training, I'll have students will do, will make kitchidi, and mm-hmm. I'll talk about that in a bit maybe, but, um, and I'll have them eat it with their fingers, which, you know, goes over sort of. I so. love eating my food with my fingers. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I remember it teaches that digestion then would begin at the fingertips with the sensation of how does it feel? Exactly. And into the mouth, how does it taste? And when you're, when we are distracted by whatever it is that we use to kind of fill up our minds so that we don't have to sit with our thoughts is a lot of what it is. Um, We can't be as present to our food and to how it, how it tastes in the mouth, what, where it triggers us in our tongue, where we, where we maybe taste the food, Mm -hmm. just the subtlety of it. And then similarly, when it actually comes, when we actually, you know, are taking in food, how much do we need? So, you know, Ayurveda teaches that one Anjali, so this is like if you imagine the amount of, Anjali is is the scoop of the hand, so everybody's Mm -hmm. hands are different. If you were to take My hands are so small. (laughs) So, you know, you can eat, so what you eat and the proportion that, you know, you eat may be different than what your child or your husband eats. So your stomach is this size, so this size rounded over. Mm -hmm. And you want to take in about one half food, one um, quarter of liquid and preferably, you know, water that is room temperature, not um, ice cold because we have our digestive juices, digestive fire, which we call Agni Mm -hmm. in Ayurveda. And to drink a bunch of cold ice water quells that digestive juice and it doesn't allow our Agni to do its job. And then finally, the, the last quarter is air. So that that's when when we overeat, we don't have enough of that air element in the stomach mm-hmm. to be able to properly digest the food. Yeah. And uh, so those are some things that hopefully you can do today that that would help you to be more mindful. That's the first step. Yeah, I totally agree with you um, that keeping food simple, um, keeping the ingredients whole, um, and eating mindfully is so you're less distracted by the stimuli outside and that allows you to be more aware of the sensation of all the feelings, all of all the communication that your body is providing you about food allows you to just bring your digestion to a completely different level um, and make it so much better. Um, and as well, so that you know that, oh, when I eat this, actually I don't, it, I don't feel very good. Yeah, exactly. I, Perhaps sometimes that's lost in, you know, the TV show that you might be watching, that you're paying more attention to that than the food. Or very commonly, we will eat more than we really need um, because we're just kind of, it's kind of rote, not a lot of thought there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, it's a huge commitment. It's a different change of a habit to kind of be with your plate, be with your food, not look for a distraction. Um, but it does make such a huge difference if you breathe, if you chew your food while you eat. Um, it just makes your whole body so much happier. Um, yeah. And I think and what I find with clients a lot of the time is that they will, when they lessen the distractions that then they they also find that it works very it works very symbiotically in that they will eat less because yes. you're satisfied sooner. Totally. Um, if you're ta- if you're smelling, you're fully tasting. You're full, you know you're you're really imbibing the food through all of your senses and not just um, just kind of mechanically shoveling it in. That 
you are you'll find that you're satiated sooner than what you may think you would be and in in, in, in so doing you then don't you you know weight loss for some people can be a side effect yes. you know pleasant um, if that's what you're looking for but just a side effect because we may not not that we necessarily seek it but uh that we're eating an appropriate amount for our body yes i completely completely agree with you and i heard also some other ayurvedic teachers saying that um dr lad is saying that for example you eat whatever emotions you're experiencing and that comes in what you said about tv and newspapers if you're reading horrible news, which usually TV focuses on, um, and you feel stressed, you feel angry, or you feel upset, that's what you're consuming with your food. Instead, if you eat with your plate and you um, look at the beauty of the vegetables and grains and whatever you made for yourself, um, you're eating that grace and positive feelings along with it. Absolutely. I think everybody can identify that maybe there's a meal or a time when maybe your grandmother or somebody has made you something and it may not be an Ayurvedic recipe yeah you can connect with it just feels better when my mom makes me a sandwich than when I make it myself so why is totally that? as Dr. Ladd talks about that what the the intention is tra then transferred into the food and um that's why it tastes so good when mom cooks for us. I know. Food made with love gives me goosebumps. I'm thinking about my grandmother's crepes. Not Ayurvedic, yes. but it makes me feel so good. Yes, yes. <laughs> so talking about the recipes and food, um, what is your favorite Ayurvedic recipe and why? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think I, I go back to Kichiri and um, Kichiri, or some people call it Kichiri. Um, yeah. It's spelled, if you're looking for it online, there's re lots of recipes for it, and perhaps we can put one on yes. spinach and yogurt totally. as well so we can access it. Um, so, this is a seminal Ayurvedic dish, and the reason why I like it so much is because of its malleability. We can make it for you can put it with with any seasonal vegetables, with any grains. What it essentially is is a combination of beans, and usually it's mung beans, so it doesn't always have to be, um, either split mung dal or whole mung dal, and rice. And so it could be a white basmati, it could be a brown rice, and we can adjust those things seasonally as well to best suit what we are needing for ourselves, mm -hmm. to bring us towards balance. Um, and most tra most cultural traditions have some sort of grain and bean tradition. So you know yeah. you might have like black beans and rice, or you know things like that that are in other cultures. Um, so this is the Indian tradition from which where Ayurveda derives um, its origin. And so you're you're cooking those together as well as um, ghee, which is clarified butter. Love and ghee. Yes, there's a, another also very important um, staple of an Ayurvedic diet. Mm -hmm. And then you can make, with your with your kitchen day, you can in, in put in the, you're sort of making, it sort of like kind of turns into like an oatmeal type consistency that you can make it soupier if you prefer. Yeah. But um, a seasonal masala, or you know, masala just means mix, spice mix. So that you can take uh, spices that are appropriate for the season, or so you know. Just for, as a quick example, in the summer you're going to want because there's you know there's so much heat in the external. We don't need we already and then our bodies are just a microcosm of that. Mm -hmm. So we already have more heat, more digestive fire, more agni. So we need, don't need as much to put as much into our food. So we would take, make a seasonal masala that is um, then a little that has a cooling effect, just on a very simple basis. Yeah. And then seasonal vegetables, and so there's so much prana, and this is this is said to be one of the most easily digestible foods, and so what it can do is it, it it's a nice way to either kickstart. I mean, it can do it. It can it can do it all. This is like just such a versatile dish, and uh, it can kickstart your digestion if you if it's too slow. It can slow it down if it is too fast. It's what we would call in Ayurveda to be tri doshic meaning that it is good for whether you have, you know, a vata, pitta, or kapha constitution or a vata, pitta, kapha imbalance. Yeah. It, is a, it is a nourishing, healing, and ojas, life force building food. Yeah, uh, totally agree. And 
I love my kitchen and um, the one variety that I find extremely light and easy to digest is split moon beans um, with quinoa. Yeah. yeah. And add some spices, maybe a few vegetables, and it's amazing. Uh, so, so good. Well, and that's, I guess, the other important point here is that this, this tastes good. <laughs> oh, yes, it does taste good. And it's in incredibly versatile. Um, it, it truly is. And this, and this is something that, you know, um, my husband will eat it, my, you know, and, and even kind of, and once you begin to adapt more Ayurvedic principles into your diet, you'll crave it when you need it. Yeah. You'll crave it and think, you know, this is like a post-holiday, uh, uh, you know, when you maybe are eating foods, maybe you're traveling and eating foods you don't normally eat and you're feeling a little out of it with your digestion. This is a wonderful way to get yourself back into, um, back to, where you want to be or to even do I have clients who I'll recommend where one day a week that maybe they just they do like a kitcheny cleanse so to speak um, you know not in a traditional cleanse way yeah. but they that they eat this food that is so easily digestible that essentially what it does is gives their gives your digestive system a, a bit of a break and sort of hits hits the reset button once a week Yes. which is a nice way to employ it in the beginning if you're not really sure how much or how frequently you should be eating this. Yeah, totally. And kishori for breakfast is actually a very, very good way to start your day, a good alternative to oatmeal, to sugary oatmeal that a lot of people eat. Um, so definitely the recipe that we put under the video, guys, use it, make it. Um, so talking about um, digestion, um, and we mentioned it before, newspapers and TV, that uh, our nervous system is very strongly connected to our digestion. So our brain is stro strongly connected to our second brain in the stomach. And when we're stressed out, it affects digestion. What can Ayurveda do to help alleviate the stress? Fortunately, there's a lot, and this is one of the reasons why I really love the practice, is that there's so much that we can do that, that seems really simple, um, but employing it is quite powerful. So another primary tenet of Ayurveda um, is that like increases like. So you might think about, um, let's say that we're, you know, we're in the winter season, and it is... There's a feeling outside of, you know, maybe there's snow or there's ice and mm -hmm. think about a river that has an ice jam that, you know, it's trying to flow, but there's some inertia there. And, and we may feel in our minds like we're stuck in a rut, you know, maybe we're going to work and sort of doing, feeling just not satisfied and perhaps um, that shot and that kind of stagnation, it, it can come into our bodies it can slow our digestion down this would be kapha excess kapha which is uh, comes to us in late winter and spring and just as an example so those qualities if you think about rather than taking out the polarities of good and bad instead of coming into the real juice in the center what are the qualities of our lives and of the stressors or the things that are happening for us and how can we then under the principle of knowing that like increases like how can we make an adjustment so let, for our digestion? So let me continue with that example. So, um, what, you know, if if we're finding that maybe we're carrying some excess weight around the middle, which is a sign that of of, of excess kapha, um, it can be con congestion in the chest, the the lungs, also mucusy, any kind of mucusy stuff in the eyes, anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, um, Digestion, if it is too slow, um, or if it is just if it's just sluggish, it doesn't necessarily mean constipation, but it can be just sluggish, like the boa constrictor coma. Yeah, mentioned. How then apply since like increases like? We want to go the other way, and and you know instead of eating um, like warm, moist, heavy, oily kinds of foods, which would then just intensify that. We want to uh, to balance out kapha or excess kapha. We would want to apply um, the things in our lives that would be balancing. So the opposite quality. So if we're stuck in a rut, then we would want to 
try something different. Um, you know, even, and that's like, well, what does that have to do with my digestion? But as you mentioned with the, you know, the second brain and the stomach, that in our minds, if we're feeling inertia, stuck, if we're fe- then we need to change that in the mind and then allow that to change in the stomach. You know, similarly, with the kinds of foods that, we, that we're eating, we can balance that out by eating more of, um, eating food that has more spice to it, that mm-hmm. is warm, that, is, uh, that has more of a pungent and even um, a bit of a bitter taste. Not bitter, maybe like you think of like, oh, like a lemon drop or something, but bitter mm-hmm. as in like millet um, would be a good example of that, of, which is a grain that's excellent mm-hmm. for coffee. More coffee, I think, though, what happens, is that we tend to be a very pitta and vata aggravated culture. Yes. That we are, meaning, you know, pitta, the elements of fire and water coming together, which is sort of, as that manifests as stressors in our lives, the need to just push, 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 and the feeling like it's just never enough. It's no matter what, it's never enough. You know, 80 hours, not, you know, it's there's just, it's never enough. And then vata, which are the elements of air and space coming together, which is the then when not that overstimulation. So, um, you know, being in traffic and listening to the, having the radio on and maybe talking on your phone and just and your phone even worse. Don't do that. Um, just constantly have some kind of um, some kind of external stimulation, which then could, may give you. You might be able to identify with a feeling. Of the, you, know, you may come home at the end of the day and feel like you're sort of hovering above yourself, not able to really ground in. Yes. So those things are pretty common, and the stressors that we have in our Western lives tend to be more in that in that in that vein. So we need to use we can use Ayurveda to help us swing to the other side. So let's say that we have a work day. Maybe we're in a competitive profession. You know, maybe we're an attorney or something like that, or you know, where you walk hours, where maybe you do have even just an angry phone call, you know, mm-hmm. or something like. What can you, which is stressful, and then can you know make give you an upset stomach? So what can you do? You apply the opposite quality in the same way as I talked about with kapha. So you want to take in things that are pleasing to the senses that are going to, little you down, and. Um, with vata, if you know, if you're feeling very scattered, if you get home and you can't quite concentrate on one task, maybe you go and you grab an envelope and you start opening it and looking at that, and then you see a dust bunny under the couch and you you work with that, and and you start a little dinner and you're just kind of all over the place. Your best medicine, even though it's the hardest thing to do at the time, is to sit still yes. <laughs> or do a little breathing and to. To apply, because because vata, for example, as I'm talking about, is erratic. It's light. It's airy. And in order to ground that, we need to take the opposite qualities, which is gra- ground, um, heaviness, and we can take that into our food. We could take it in through how we choose to structure our lifestyle, so that we're giving ourselves a moment to come in. And so whatever is that is a stressor during the life in, in the life, we need to look at what. Is that aggravating? What element is that aggravating? Is that making us feel more fiery, more angry, more irritable? That would be pitta. Is it making us feel ungrounded, um, nervous, anxious? Is it giving us insomnia? That's vata. Um, is it making us feel like we are like we can't face the day, and we're, we have inertia? We feel sluggish, even feel a little lazy. That's kapha. And so then. Uh, there are, there are stressors of all kinds. So understanding where the stress comes from and what the origin of it is and what the kind of what the quality of it is, then that, that it gives us a lot of information so that we can then employ like versus like and swing ourselves back the other way. So make sure that if we have a very pitta aggravating day, we don't go home and eat a really spicy meal full of chili and um, oily stuff push that pitta even more and, and then push it in our digestion. Yeah, that's amazing. I think it's very, very important to recognize that not all stress comes the same and that um, the like will increase the like. 
And it's an interesting thing that you mentioned about Vata. I think um, a lot of people, um, and Vata usually goes out of balance first. Um, and a lot of people are forced to multitask throughout their day. And multitasking aggravates um, Vata. So what you mentioned that come in uh, after work from home and take just a minute, just a minute to maybe lay down or sit down to relax, to breathe, will make such a huge difference, um, especially in your cravings, because intuitively our body knows that it needs grounding. And if we don't do that grounding emotionally through either meditation or relaxation or breathing, what it tends to do is we start craving heavy stuff. So you come home, you're all over the place, you feel stressed out, and what do you crave the most? Ice cream, nuts, cookies, something that's going to make you heavy, but it doesn't resolve the root cause of that spaciness, of that increased vata in the first place. So what you mentioned about taking a minute to relax is an incredibly, incredibly effective tip to reducing cravings and, as a result, improving digestion. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And it can be, and you know, part of what that vata needs is a routine and is some structure. So if you were to say for yourself, I'm going to come home and, you know, if, if you're needing a little something to get you, you know, maybe you make a cup of spiced tea, not with caffeine, but um, maybe, a, you know, a non-caffeinated chai is nice or something like that or just whatever. Um, it's warm. Yeah. Even add a little agave or honey in the, that. Then you add the sweet, which is grounding for vata, and perhaps you then just sit and let your mind have some space. Or like you said, you do a, you come home and you just sit and breathe without the stimuli, without the reading or the TV or the phone, so that you can really know: Am I craving food, or do I just kind of need to chill out for a second and yeah. and, and give myself a moment to? digest. We don't give ourselves, we, I think we give ourselves a really hard time in just thinking, oh, we need to come home and be able to just snap the next thing right away. But that's actually not a very natural process. Instead, we need to, we need to take a moment. And there's no weakness in that. It's actually very, it can be really challenging to come home and sit with your thoughts, right? But it's a beautiful point, Nadja. Yeah. Okay. So uh, talking about that moment of relaxation or peacefulness, um, I think it would be even more beneficial if we add some relaxing things to that. So you mentioned an herbal tea would be relaxing. Um, and I guess certain smells are also more relaxing. And as I heard, you're starting um, a company that produces essential oils. And it's natural, um, all Ayurvedically based. Um, so tell us a little bit how somebody can use different smells to balance out their system, whether it's um, vata or pita or kapha aggravated, and how that in turn will improve their digestion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and I and I understand that in the beginning, to some folks, it may it may sound like a far flung connection to put oil with digestion. But Let's I'll, connect the dots. Okay, stay with me. So, essential oil is something that I that I really love to use um, for myself, and also with with, with clients. The reason being uh, is that aroma works beyond even the level of thought. So, if you imagine that you walk into a space. Maybe it's, you know, I've been talking a little bit about um, the smells that you, or the things that you grew up with. So maybe it's grandma's house, or maybe it is the place, you know, your, your a school, or maybe, you know, it's your child's daycare, or something like that it has a really strong visceral connection for you. And, and you may notice that the smell, you know the smell, and there's nothing, it's not, a definable smell, but um, it, it triggers a response, an emotional response, uh, whether that be good or bad or whatever. But it does, it does, it does trigger that for you. So this is the way that aroma works. It's very similar, um, and that essential oils, when they're when they're truly when they're pure and of a high quality grade, 
they can they can work in that same way for us to balance things out. It's another tool. So just as we use food as medicine in Ayurveda, this is another avenue for us. And you know, as is yoga, as is you know, as our herbs, as our uh, structuring our lifestyles. So this is just another porthole into finding that moving target that is balance. We never really just say, "Oh, I'm here, I'm balanced, and I'm done." Yes. <laughs> it would be nice if it were that way, but it's just not. So we're always seeking it. It's a moving target. So with the oils, just you know, again coming back to like increasing light, you can take a high pit a day where you cut where you're aggravated. You're maybe like honking your horn and yelling at the person in traffic in front of you or you're you know on the train and you're just irritated because it's not going in as fast as you would like things like that uh that we can then apply essential oil apply a, you know which then we have the aroma to particular spots on the body or just whatever feels most intuitive for you it doesn't have to be prescribed uh, and just take in that very sensate experience and that's going to help pull us into pull us into ourselves and out of the external which is something that many times we are needing particularly with pitta or vata imbalance with kapha it can help us it can help provide a bit of invigoration so that we can then get out there in the world and do what we need to do if, if that's not happening already and so um, the vata oils are going to be, we're going to want to seek things that are a little spicy, that are more grounding, and that will counter the, the qualities of air and space that leave us feeling a little flighty, uh, a little out there, a little anxious. With kapha, as I have mentioned briefly, we're going to want to find things that are, that are spicy and warming, but we are, kapha aggravation have a little too much earth, or a little too much of the water element. So this is going to, uh, these are going to be more invigorating. So they're going to give us that like, that little get up and go that uh, we may need to to uh, start the day. Yeah, or instead of a cup of coffee. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So that we don't have to use those kinds of, you know, there are, we all, we self-medicate in lots of ways and we may not even know that we're doing it. This is a really um, beautiful tool that, uh, that that I think uh, maybe our ancestors knew that, knew that was there and maybe were more aware of, but we have lost it a bit, and we may know that apple pie smells like home, but that may make us feel good and make us feel like, oh, I'm at home, or, you know, when you, but how we have a comforting and a balancing uh, effect from something that that is that is other than food or that is other than you know that is accessible to us via you know, something that the earth already provides for us in the form of, of essential oil yes and it's amazing i i tried lisa's oils and they're really great and it, it is amazing the connection between um smells emotions and cravings because usually people will have that craving to um either ground or to feel some sort of emotional need. And those cravings with willpower, they can be really hard to control because there's only that much willpower. Um, yeah. At the end, a lot of people will give up. Um, but having that emotional impact of different smells can help you feel out that emotional need in a different way than food, which is an incredible, incredible tool to have. Uh, so we'll definitely put a link underneath the video for um, for your essential oils and people can order and try something that doesn't have side effects, which a lot of herbs can if you self-medicate. Yeah. And it's sustainable, organic, and based on ancient recipes. Exactly. And it, it does allow us to, I think you make a really good point that I just wanted to jump onto really quickly is that that it allows for us to get out of the willpower game yes that willpower we're taking it out of the equation through the food through you know like we're talking about with aroma that we're moving toward balance and um, balance in mind and body and spirit is going to include balance and digestion and so then there is 
no craving um, except really we crave what we need food wise to balance our bodies and our minds and our spirits okay well thank you Lisa um, and guys all the resources for Lisa's website for her Ayurvedic oils are going to be at the bottom thank you thank you thank you spinach and yoga <laughs>